if you are new to the channel then subscribe the channel and press the bell icon for further notification okay student we welcome you all to this new lecture in machine series so today again we will be solving five questions starting from question number 181 to up to question number 185 okay then let's try to solve these five questions okay if you come to question number 181 what is asked a three phase squirrel cage induction motor is supplied from a ballast three phase source drives a mechanical load the torque speed characteristics of the motor the solid car and the load that is the dotted curve load torque is the dotted and the solid one is the motor car as shown of the two equilibrium points a and b which of the options correctly describes the stability of a b so it is something like this question this one t e is the motor curve that is and t l is the load curve so here t l is the dotted one the load curve and this one is your t e so the idea is the same if you come at b so somehow if your speed is increased so stable point is this one if there is any disturbance after that also it should come back to its original position suppose at b some disturbance occurs due to which speed increases so the natural tendency of the motor should so that it should come back to its original position so if your speed is increased then the torque developed by motor is in the this line if somehow the speed is increased due to disturbance so the my natural tendency should be te should be less than tl if this happens then the motor will automatically if this happens then motor will automatically try to bring down the speed because your generated torque is less than this so automatically speed will reduce now if you come to b if speed you increase then your uh, electromagnetic torque is this one torque produced by motor and load torque is here so te is greater than this so it will increase speed more further so it will keep on increasing it will never come back to b if it goes out of b so b is not a stable point obviously come to a if somehow your speed is increased then your electromagnetic torque is less than this because your generated torque is less than this so the tendency of the motor is it is to come back the speed will automatically reduce it will come back to a similar thing if speed is reduced if speed is somehow speed is reduced then what should be your natural tendency te should be l greater than tl so that motor speed increases so if it comes here you can see t is greater than so it will come back it will push this operating point towards a so it will come go back to a so therefore a is stable b is unstable option a now if you come to 182 a balanced three phase voltage is applied to a star connected induction motor the phase two neutral voltage began being b the stator resistance rotor resistance referred to stator the stator leakage rate rotor leakage reactance referred to stator and the magnetizing reactance are denoted by r s stator resistance rotor resistance stator reactance rotor reactance and magnetizing reactance the magnitude of the starting current so in approximate model we have seen this is your xm this is your r xs second axis this is r this is r1 or rs xs this is xr and this was rr by s but at starting s is equal to 1 so you can because i am doing it starting so it is rr so this this starting current this current is very low compared to your starting current because starting current is very high because s is 1 so it becomes slow once s starts decreasing then this value becomes very high so this current is going to reduce but starting current is very high so this current doesn't uh, stand so match equal with that current you can neglect that's why this xm so your starting current generally we take this is your supply voltage phase 2 neutral because we are drawing phase 1 so it is v by this plus this this plus this so rr plus rr whole square and then xs plus xs xr whole square under root v by z so that is your again option a next if you come to 183 a separately accelerated dc machine is coupled with 50 hertz three phase four pole induction machine so this is connected with this one the dc machine is energized fast and the machine is rotating at 1600 rpm okay subsequently the induction machine is also connected to 50 hertz balance supply you have given power to this side also the phase sequence being consistent with the direction of rotation and the direction of rotation is following that same direction that manner way the phase sequence is given in steady state which one will act as a generator which one will act as a motor now this generator dc generator speed is already given 1600 rpm you calculate the ns here in sing induction machine ns is 120 into 50 by 4 so it is 1500 so obviously because they are mechanically coupled so the speed at which the rotor is rotating of this induction motor is 1600 rpm which is more than the synchronous speed so rotor speed will be 1600 rpm because it is coupled so it is more than ns so obviously this machine will act like a generator so if this acts like a generator then this one will obviously act like a motor because generator means this shaft should have 
some mechanical strength that mechanical power is coming from this motor so your dc machine will the dc machine will act like a motor and induction machine will like a induction generator because the rotor speed is more than synchronous speed so that's why it is option c now if you come to 184 a three phase 400 volt 6 pole 50 r square wheel case induction motor is running at a slip of 5 percent the speed of stator magnetic field with respect to rotor magnetic field now i told you induction machine this was suppose if you give supply to stator so stator magnetic field rotates at this direction due to which this in the rotor the rotor magnetic field also tries to rotate in this direction but uh, because rotor can rotate the torque will move the rotor in such a direction so that relative speed becomes due so the motor also starts to rotate in this direction that is nr so ultimately whatever the gap between these two that is covered by this magnetic field rotor magnetic field speed suppose it is rotating at 1000 rpm so the rotor rotates at 900 rpm and this rotor magnetic field on top of that it rotates at 100 rpm so this magnetic field suppose this was 1000 so rotor rotates at 900 and on top of that one man that magnetic field also starts rotating at 100 so the magnetic field with respect to each other they are always stationary because this is also 1000 from here if you see this magnetic field also 1000 because its base is also rotating 900 and it itself is rotating on 100 so total speed from outside it will be 1000 1000 so the relative speed between the magnetic fields stator magnetic field and rotor magnetic field will be zero so it is either a or b and the speed of rotor with respect to stator magnetic field now someone is running in here with a speed of this thousand so how does it will feel it will feel that rotor is also rotating behind it with a speed of 900 rpm and because you are rotating at thousand suppose you are moving in a car of thousand rpm thousand speed and another car is also moving behind you 900 rpm so you are inside this car so from this car how do it look like it will look like that because its speed is slow so the distance between them will keep on increasing first the distance will be this after that somehow the distance will be this because this speed is low it will it will fall behind so from here if some person is sitting here so it will see that this person is moving away so it will feel that this person is actually going in negative direction of 100 rpm that's why the speed is increasing because you are on the top of this one so it will be minus 50 rpm because from here it will look like that it is going in reverse direction so that's why it is option a now if you come to 185 the slip of induction motor normally does not depends on the speed depends on rotor speed obviously synchronous speed obviously you know shaft or torque obviously shaft torque is load if you increase more and more load obviously speed there will be effect core loss component so there is no part of core loss component on slip split slip is related to your rotation of the rotor core loss is always fixed so it doesn't depend on that core loss component so that's why it is option d if you like the video then press the like button and please give your valuable comments in the comment section